God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear brothers and sisters, in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, our Good Shepherd. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Children of the Heavenly Father, sheep of the Good Shepherd, like a good shepherd, a gentle shepherd, leading us to pastures, pastures green with the word, and beside streams wet with his holy passion, Jesus, our Good Shepherd, makes his way for us and for our salvation. Jesus is our Good Shepherd, and he's come to lay down his life for the sheep. Treading upon Solomon's porch on this day in the Holy Scriptures during the Feast of Dedication, one greater than Solomon and wisdom incarnate is quickly surrounded by the wintry hearts of his fellow Jews. Those were gathered there in Solomon's portico in the temple to celebrate Hanukkah. And as they were celebrating, they were remembering the cleansing of the temple in 167 B.C. And they're now assembled in order to profane the temple, not made with hands. The coldness of their intentions is made manifest with their impious seizing of Jesus on Solomon's porch. How long, how long will you keep us in suspense? How long will you keep us in doubt if you are the Christ Tell us plainly. These are the words that seem to be asked in sincerity and truth, but don't let that fool you, dear friends. For those Jews have unregistered stones holstered in their hearts, and they're ready to be taken up in a blazing fervor against Jesus in a moment's notice. Yes, Jesus, yes, tell us plainly what, that you are the Christ, so that your blasphemous blood may be upon us and on our children. Yes, tell us plainly, remove all doubt, and confirm us in our unbelief. Such is the true voice of wolves gathered around our good shepherd. Their voices, not unlike those who question a loving God's power or a loving God's will, when tragedy strikes, questioning God's even existence when tragedies strike. They are the voices of those who aspire to serve God, but profane his glory as they reject God's only begotten son. They are the voices of those who lay claim to the sheep pen by virtue of their own goodness and their own merits, ignoring the lone door to salvation. They are thieves. They are wolves. They are enemies of the good shepherd and enemies of you, his lambs, assembled in his church. They are wolves, wolves in sheep's clothing, waiting for the hour of feasting, and they want to feast upon you. Yet the Savior continues to love even them. How he longs to guide these poor, twisted souls to streams of living water. How his heart yearns to immerse them in the wealth of his glorious passion. To drown their ferociousness, their, these unbelieving beasts. And to resurrect gentle, faithful lambs unto service to the Lord. To the newness of life toward God. To the loving service of their neighbor. To cover over canine hearts with the purity of true divine wool. But even the Savior's sheep, yes, even you, are tempted to exchange the pure wool of Christ's righteousness for the matted fur of sin. You know that's true. Beware. Beware, dear children of Christ. Beware this world's alluring voices telling you that the ways of the world and the ways of our society are the way it is, so the church and Christ should just get along with it as we blaspheme in his face. They will tempt you to be clothed with matted piety, promising success and riches, popularity, and all the joys and happiness of this life. Beware. It is a mask. It is a cover-up. It is an imitation of true joy in Christ. It is the matted fur of wolves. 
What does that matted fur look like? Examining ourselves with the mirror of God's law, we see remnants of its existence even now. We see hatred of or even indifference toward our neighbor. Racism, prejudice, bigotry. We see selfishness, love grown cold, true apathy to the plight of so many. We see the continuation of situations like adultery and abortion as though this is just commonplace now and we can just do what we want to do in the face of God. We see selfishness, apathy, and apathy toward the plight of women, to the plight of children, to the plight of the poor, to the lame, to the infirm. We're slow to listen, quick to speak, swift to anger. And oh, our self-righteous anger is so wonderful, even in the face of God. We see the lusts of our own hearts and sometimes live it out. We see rebellion against parents, rebellion against authority, rebellion against Almighty God. We see in ourselves a creature once drowned under the waters of holy baptism, continually rising up its ugly head, gasping for another breath, reaching for an imaginary life preserver, and making every effort to cleave to a way destined for eternal ruin. We know it's true because we live it. God's law is brutally honest and reveals that we are by reason of our own fallen, broken nature, we are indeed wolves. We were born that way. The deeds of our flesh reveal the matted fur of a creature chilled with sin and awaiting sin's wages. This leads to thoughts of doubt, true despair, and complete unbelief. Thoughts which you, if you're like me, have experienced all too often. That's the problem when we look to our own works. That's the problem whether for our salvation or the assurance of our salvation we begin to look at our own outer works. And this is problematic for the church. There is no hope in the deeds of the flesh, none whatsoever. There is no peace. There is no certainty in these deeds of the flesh. Therefore, Jesus is the one who directs us away from our own works, away from what we perceive as our strengths, away from our supposed goodness, and he shines the brilliance of his light upon the glory of his deeds, of his actions. Jesus says it to us all too clearly. The works I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. These works of his being certain, peace, and hope. These works of Jesus win forgiveness of sins for all who would be his sheep, even for you and for me. For Jesus is indeed the good shepherd, and the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. The good shepherd bears the sins of the whole world. Jesus is beaten down with the rod of righteousness. He is bound to the altar of sacrifice and adorned with the jewels of mockery. Jesus is anointed with the spittle of wild dogs and ravished by rebellious shepherds, all casting their hate and anger toward him. Stripped of all modesty, the temple not made with hands is paraded before the world as one who is weak, one who is unloving, one who is a criminal. Jesus is condemned in your place, and his flesh is fastened to a tree for your salvation. Jesus' blood is let out pouring from his veins. Jesus' hands are nailed, his feet pierced, his side speared. Jesus is the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The good shepherd suffers. The good shepherd dies and embraces my sin and your sin, the sin of the whole world. He embraces death and the devil in folds of his wounded flesh. He is the good shepherd. He is good to the very end. Good even in weakness. Good even in death. Good for you. Good for me. Good for the whole world. This is Jesus' work. This is Jesus' work, which he does in the Father's name. It is glorious. It is all magnificent. It is beautifully bloody. 
For in the goodness of Jesus' peril, he decants his entire life that his blood may be sprinkled upon us and upon our children. From the greatest to the least among us. From the oldest to the youngest. From the strongest to the weakest. Even for you. These works of Jesus are the works for your salvation. Know this. Believe this. It is sure and it is true. His word tells you so. For faith comes by hearing and hearing by the message of Christ himself. As Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And now though at times you and I may seem more like wolves than his redeemed and regenerate sheep. The rod and staff of our good shepherd graciously calls you and me to repentance. To repentance. To repent and turn. Like sheep, we wander. We stray. And we go right to the killing fields of this world. Yet, it is the good shepherd who goes after us, calling us back through the voice of his heart. Sheep. Hear the shepherd's voice. Sheep follow the good shepherd. That's what sheep do. That's their purpose in life. That's their joy in life. Upon hearing Jesus' voice, you are to follow him toward streams of living water. You are to follow him toward holy, life-giving water, which cleanses your heart and removes the stain of your sins. Follow Jesus to the Eden's pulpit, Where there he preaches the way, the truth, and the life. Where Jesus speaks salvation into your very ears. Where the cross and the resurrection of your Savior triumph over your sin, triumph over death, and triumph over the devil. And follow him, follow him to the pastures green with life. Pastures whereby he prepares for you food and a table before you, even in the presence of your enemies, where he feeds you with his very own body and his blood for the forgiveness of your sins, repentant in Christ. Through these, your good shepherd lovingly mercies you with his passion, gently uplifts you with his absolution, and tenderly pledges within you the resurrection of your body unto life everlasting. Jesus said it clearly. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one, no one will snatch them out of my hand. And so, dear brothers and sisters, this morning we find that our shepherd is kind. We find that our shepherd is compassionate, friendly, and gentle. He is truly our good shepherd. Jesus is your good shepherd. He is Solomon's son and Solomon's savior. Solomon's wisdom incarnate for you who are more precious than the lilies of the field, as the word tells us. Jesus is the one who has laid down his life, even gives to you his life, that by faith in his name you may live forever as his lambs. Jesus' voice echoes within these very walls. The hour of feasting is upon us. The shepherd presents himself now to us in the midst of a wintry world, cold hearts. Come. Come and surround him. Come. Come and receive him. Come and rest in the palm of his hand. Come. Come and delight. His heart is with faith in his word and his holy work. Hear my voice, Jesus calls to you. Follow me in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human comprehension guard and protect our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.